Steve Ward style deal, but I've integrated the CD4046 along with the Schmidt trigger. So again, just like in the other ramp setup, got a current transformer feedback. You can see that's basically just coming straight in through a 1K resistor. And I've got something like a 100 nanofarad cap right there going straight into the input. Then the outputs are going into the input of the CD4046. The output of the CD4046 is what's driving the inputs of the gate drivers. I'm not really suggesting that anyone go about building a bridge this way. This just happens to be the third time I've done it and it seems to work alright. This is how I've got it laid out. You can see I'm just jumping with wires here. Um, again, this is not ideal at all. I seem to get away with it for how I'm running these. Haven't had to take the effort, money, time, whatever it is for a more elaborate setup. If you want to visually get an idea, i am just got four switches in a row coming off the source of one, jumping over to the drain of the other. Then on the next two, coming off the source of one, jumping to the drain of the other. That's just two half bridges, and then you're literally just connecting those together. For an easy way to understand how to switch these, you can say this will be my line on the red, and that black will be the neutral. The neutral is coming in, and it's connected to the sources. So these two black marks right here are on the sources. All of these third pins are the sources of the switches, but only these two here have actual connection to ground. So imagine you've got your power coming in, just say we're going to switch this switch on. So we're going to provide the gates with a positive voltage. You can see why you wouldn't want to switch this adjacent transistor on at the same time. So you can see if you've got power coming in and we cut this switch on positive voltage, we want to make sure that the gate on this adjacent one has a negative voltage. Basically this second transistor here is tied to ground, so if they're both on, you've got power going straight through each one to ground. You've got this transistor on, this adjacent one off, so power is going to come through the primary. I've got my primary hooked up here, you can't really see it, but the power is coming through the primary here, which is going to be this red wire. So the primary on this side is hooked to the source and the drain of these two. So you got it going into the primary, it comes out the other end down here connected to these two transistors. So which one of these needs to switch on this side? Well you can see it needs to be this one on the right because that's where the neutral is hooked up. That's the ground. So you've got to switch these two outer ones and these two inner ones at the same time. So if you've got the two outer ones on at the same time, you need the two inner ones to be off at the same time. It's really not the most appealing arrangement because that means you've got any and outy. But at any rate, that's how these need to switch. So I'm in the process of tidying these wires up, but these two outer ones are going to have the same polarity. And then the two inner ones are going to have the opposite polarity to these outer ones. So also what I've done here is just I've got this little jack here for my interrupter which feeds the enable pins on the gate drivers and I've just put a 1k resistor across that and hopefully all that will do is just pull the enable to ground hard enough to where it's not going to run in continuous waves. So basically that means that the gate drivers are not going to output until it sees the interrupter signal. Right now I've just got the GDT hooked up, just the one winding and I've got a scope probe on another winding. So when I cut it on, VCO on the CD4046 is going to run depending on what I have this center frequency adjust set to. I basically just put two 2K pots in line with two 50K pots on pins 11 and 12. It's running at 224, so I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i got my center frequency knob all the way to the left, and then I crank it all the way to the right. You see I've got a max frequency of 356. So if I raise my potentiometer on the max frequency knob, see I bring it all the way up to 684. So then if I go back to my center frequency knob, now I've got a range of 240 all the way up to 684 right basically you can see how that works swing this all the way to the right the max frequency and then from there I can set the max frequency it's going to reach swing it all the way to the left and I see the minimum frequency is going to reach honing in the window there so if I try to adjust it down now I've got a window of 280 up to 360 
So I've got this uh, set up and running in the test setup right now. Powering the logic, powering the bridge at 30 volts. Got this interrupter hooked up and going. It's locked in right now. It doesn't have the best phase angle. Um, very low duty cycle. Let's see. Let me cut it up a little bit. It's got a phase lock and it's running, but uh, just to sort of give an example here, uh, trying to tune this oscillator, I've tried to decouple it as best I could and all that, but you can see how it's laid out. It's sitting right there next to the coil, so it's going to be nearly impossible to try to tune this thing accurate given the interference that's going on. So just put my finger on the snips, see that output change. snips right here are part of it and then once I touch it it basically shifts the uh, phase angle the more you have this decoupled the less you'll see that you know for example um, I originally had my little timing capacitor sort of sticking up in the air with some legs that were too long you know clipping those off helped trying to throw some little bypass capacitors across the potentiometer legs directly that also helped it would basically be a waste of time for me to try to tune this perfectly with this layout I'd have to get it basically uh, isolated from the field coming off that coil there I sort of halfway did that this setup by using some grounded mesh underneath the uh, platform there I was hoping to be able to get away with the two gate drivers to run continuous wave I got away with that on that full bridge before I converted it to a dual resonant coil and I noticed that when I ran it continuous wave at 120 volts full wave rectified the output was real nice as I could tell I could if I tried to pull the arc from it all the way up it would be insane and somehow I got away with doing that with just the two gate drivers but I did heat sink them and then put a fan on them. It didn't seem like I was going to be able to get away with that when uh, testing this out from the signal generator because it seemed like while the signal was clean, these gate drivers were heating up real quick. So it's kind of going to be a discovery for me to see if I can get away with running a lower frequency coil continuous wave. Plan was to take advantage of that bad boy right there. So right now, basically the uh, VCO is running. It does not have a lock, but I've got my scope probe just chilling over here. You can see that it's still picking up something. So we're picking up, you know, it says like 263 kilohertz, and it's a real dirty, almost looking sine wave. If I try to check my output here, you see I still appear to have some small output. But of course, that's because I've got 30 volts pulsing into that primary. So you've got a very poor output. Basically, if I adjust the phase angle knob here, the knob's all the way to the left, and you see 264, and I'm sweeping the knob up. It's going up in frequency. It's kind of dancing around. It's not able to, uh, scope's not tracking it well enough. But see that waveform changing, waveform changing? See it start to turn into a nice rise. Now we have a lock. Even though it's not really looking all that great. It has a lock. It just has a very poor lock. It has a lock where the phase angle is way off, basically. And if I adjust that knob outside of its window, and now we're back to just outputting a fixed frequency, right? So we still get output. If I actually move my hand close enough, you see it'll bump that coil into being able to get a lock, right? But we don't want that, obviously. You want it to maintain a good lock at all times so now in this case I can just crank this up a little bit I can crank it all the way to the right until it gets a lock but this doesn't allow me with that minimum and maximum setting to get a very good phase angle so what's more appropriate if I adjust my maximum here and you can see I can still I can still bump the knob all the way to the left where I lose my phase lock and if I bring it far enough I get it back so that's pretty close I need to get about there to get it back swing it all the way over now again what you're hearing there is interference also you can see I've, I've basically brought it using those knobs it more or less maintains the phase lock no matter where I bring the knob so now that it's got a lock and I move the uh, phase angle around it's not really changing the frequency around a whole lot it's just adjusting that 
phase relation, the frequency might change a little bit as it's doing it, of course, but that's pretty much all it's doing while it's moving that uh, center frequency knob. And then, you know, once again, I've lost a good lock. It's just really not doing anything. It might be confusing to have it set to a phase angle like that maybe or let's just say a fixed frequency and then you're trying to test it and then but then you see it's running so you're like well what the you know what's going on is it just really is it tuned really bad well yeah it is tuned really bad pretty much but it's the phase angle it's that uh chip not getting a lock so it's going to look real crappy till you get that lock then you can hear all that weird stuff going on Again, is why it's almost near pointless for me to try to do this right now with the you know way that's set up. It's just not going to work.